What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube and also participate in the comments. Be active in the Pitchy Ninja community. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Sonny Gray, who had 7 Ks and 6 scoreless innings, giving up 2 hits. He relied chiefly on his sweepers, including this painted sweeper. And this overlay shows just why Gray Sweeper is so effective. Here it is tunneled with his 94 mile an hour fastball. And you can see how long those pitches tunnel. And then that sweeper just disappears right as you're ready to swing. And not coincidentally, Sonny Gray, the tunneling master, was the feature of my Peacock segment that I did on Peacock before yesterday's game. Yeah, the audio kind of sucks because we were having Zoom issues. My sweet voice doesn't sound as good on an iPhone. What has made this year so special for him? Oh, well, Sonny Gray is a tunneling master and basically a pitching genius. He does two types of tunneling. One is strike-to-ball tunneling, where you see here, he starts that slider out looking just like a... Gray battled Cole Irvin, who only had one K in five innings, giving up one run, and that K was on this fastball that kind of missed his spot, but did the job. Luis Castillo had six Ks in six innings, gave up five earned runs, and had these change-ups, sliders, and fist pumps despite giving up all those runs. I kind of like it, though. Why not keep up that energy? He faced Taj Bradley who had three Ks in three and a third innings, giving up five runs, and had this curveball and changeup. Tuki Toussaint had five Ks in three and two thirds innings, giving up two runs, and got his Ks on this sinker, splitter, as well as these gorgeous curveballs. And one thing I've noticed is Tuki is a smiling assassin. The man is constantly smiling at hitters. And one thing I can tell you, ninja fact, never trust a pitcher who smiles at you, because he just knows he's about to mess you up. He faced Paul Blackburn, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up five runs, and had this fastball and breaking ball for a sword. Kevin Gosman had seven Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and had these splitters as well as his upper 90s fastballs. And he faced Garrett Whitlock, who only had one K in one inning, and it was a backwards K on this two-seamer. Ranger Suarez had five Ks in five and a third innings, giving up five runs, and had these two seamers as well as this painted two seamer. He faced Trevor Williams, only had one K in five innings, giving up three runs, and this wicked changeup though. Matt Manning had four Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, and had this nasty slider. Brady Singer had four Ks in seven innings, giving up one run, and this slider and two seamer, and he faced Tony Gonsolin had three Ks in three and two thirds innings, giving up four runs, and had this slider and splitter. Rich Hill, aka Dick Mountain, had eight Ks in five innings, giving up three runs. His Ks were on these curveballs and fastballs. And Dick Mountain had this fastball right down the dick to Weimer, which I guess Weimer wasn't expecting. This pitch wasn't that special, but it does allow a lot of Weimer and Dick references, which are never not funny. Dick Mountain faced Colin Ray, who had three Ks in six and two-thirds innings, and got Ks on his four-seam fastball and two-seamer. Reed Detmers went six innings and got nine Ks, nice, giving up two runs. He relied chiefly on his fastball and slider combo, but also worked in a few pretty curveballs, and his curveball is absolutely beautiful. He battled Zach Gallen, who had 12 Ks in seven innings, but gave up four runs due to a couple of homers, but he was still really sharp. Gallon had some filthy knuckle curves, as well as these fastballs. Aaron Savali had two Ks in six innings, thanks to his cutter, and he faced Jamison Tyone, who had six Ks in five innings, but gave up five earned runs, and had these sweepers and cutters. David Peterson had three Ks in four innings, giving up one run, and had these absolutely wicked sliders. He faced off against Ross Stripling, who had two Ks in two innings, thanks to his changeups. Andrew Heaney had 8 Ks in 5 innings, giving up no runs, and relied on his combo of fastballs and sliders. Those sliders were kind of nasty. Garrett Cole had 5 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, relied chiefly on his fastball, which was up to 99 miles an hour. And you can see from this home plate side view, it gets on you real quick. He faced Jordan Montgomery, who had 6 Ks in 6 and 2 thirds innings, giving up no earned runs, and had these 2 seamers and curveballs. 
Spencer Strider, a.k.a. Quadzilla, had 9 Ks in 6 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 2 earned runs. His fastball was sharp and just overpowered hitters all game, working in a few of his patented k ruettes along the way. But he also had some filthy sliders. And I like this one where it actually looks like he mouths slider to Travis Darno before this pitch and then throws one. Talk about calling your own pitches. Here's an overlay of Strider's fastball and slider, and you can see what makes that combo so effective and why he can get away with throwing just those two pitches 93% of the time. And here's a close-up of Spencer Strider's quads, so you can see just why I call him Quadzilla. Spencer never skips leg day, and to Strider, leg day is any day that ends in Y. Strider outdueled Sandy Alcantara, who had six Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. Sandy had these overpowering fastballs up to 100 miles an hour, and honestly, limiting the Braves to four runs, well, it should be graded on a curve and give him a shutout. My filthiest starting pitcher of the day yesterday was Andrew Abbott. Abbott had 12 Ks in seven and two-thirds innings, giving up only one run. He was just totally brilliant yet again. His ERA this year is 1.21. He relied on his invisible fastball, these nasty change-ups, as well as these filthy curveballs, including this back foot curveball. Kind of looks like a slider, but he calls it a curveball. Hitters are only hitting 152 against Abbott's fastball. His changeup has a 32% whiff rate, and his curveball averages 2,800 RPMs with a 23% whiff rate. It's just really hard to hit. I've been watching Abbott for a long time, and I expect him to continue to be very good for the rest of the season. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Carlos Estevez had this 99-mile-an-hour heater. Brennan Bernardino had this curveball. Aniel De Los Santos had these fastballs. Devin Williams had this filthy airbender. Andres Munoz had this wicked slider. Hayden Wesneski had this vicious sweeper. Sam Hanches had this fastball and curveball. Nick Pavetta had six Ks and four innings of relief thanks to his curveballs, sliders, and fastballs. Jose Soriano had this nasty breaking ball. Brooks Raley had this filthy sweeper. Paul Sewald had this sweeper. David Robertson had these nasty cutters. Araldus Chapman had this slider and this rising 102-mile-an-hour fastball. Look at how ridiculous that fastball is. Joan Duran had this 103-mile-an-hour fastball. Kevin Kelly had this sinker that turned into a splitter. A bat splitter, that is. Effective. Listen to the crack of that Very bat. Effective. Ben Heller had this vicious two-time zone slider. Trevor Richards had a slew of disgusting change-ups. Despite not throwing particularly hard, his K per nine is almost 14. And looking at these change-ups, you can see why. But my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Felix Bautista. Look at this absolutely devastating stuff from Bautista. He had these obscene splitters, and then his fastball was up to 103 miles an hour. Here's an overlay of Bautista's 100-mile-an-hour fastball with an 87-mile-an-hour splitter. And you can see why that combo is impossible for hitters. Bautista's 6'8", throws incredibly hard, and those pitches tunnel really well, get on you quickly, and you're forced to guess quickly. Heck, even if you guess right, you're probably still going to miss. His stuff is that filthy. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of Zen. I don't know how zen it is, but this fan face-planted on the field during the Mets-Giants game last night. Of course, the Mets ended up winning the game and won their first series in over a month. We've had rally monkeys, rally praying mantises, rally cats, rally squirrels. So why not rally face plants? Ninja disclaimer, I take no responsibility for this, and y'all face plant at your own risk. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Braxton Garrett for 6Ks or more, and take Tyler Wells for 6Ks or more, and top it off, Rick Flair style, with Brian Wu for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 